Hi, I'm Darren from Isotonic Studios, and today we're going to be talking through Follow Clip XL. It's part of the modular series, and it's also available on its own via isotonicstudios.com. And it's a really quite simplistic device. I've got it dragged onto an audio track here. It can also be used on a MIDI track. And what it's going to do is it's going to save you time in setting up follow actions. As you'll know, with any clip in live, you can set up a follow action to perform a number of different things, play again, play next, etc. But after a certain amount of time in bars, beats, and, and the other thing, um, from when you launched the clip originally. Now, I, on occasions, want to use Max for Live to create loops in clips, and so that won't work because I want the follow action to happen at the clip end. And that's exactly what this device does. I've set this to next, so when the current clip gets towards the end point, it's gonna trigger the next clip below it, based on clip end and a trigger time of seven. Now that trigger time is basically the amount of time prior to the end of the clip where the next one's gonna be triggered. This is very simplistic set, so I could set that trigger time quite low, but because Max for Live works on a low priority thread, if you've got hundreds of tracks going on, you may wish to increase that time to ensure that the trigger, the, the next clip, is triggered in time. Now, I've only got one full clip here, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna very quickly split it uh, into parts that I would then use to phrase my mixes perfectly. Um, effectively, when I've got that one clip split out into many clips, I could use those as hot cues within my live set. Something that I'm used to using with the likes of Serato and Tractor, Live doesn't offer it natively, but of course it does offer you uh, many MIDI controllers that you can use to, to trigger clips as you want. So I'm gonna click on it, I'm gonna press tab, I'm gonna drag it across into my track, I'm gonna go back to automation, and I've got my grid set at four bars. Now, the first thing I wanna do is check that my warping is good enough, and what we'll do is we'll just, that seems like the start, and I don't spend, personally, an awful time on warping. I'll set 1.1, and I'll warp from here, and what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to, realistically, focus in on the parts where it looks visually like there's breaks and changes, and I'm just gonna pull things back into line. And uh, that one just seems a little early, so we'll pull it back. Now, dance music is naturally quantized. I mean, this is quite an old track itself, but it should flow and it should move. Now, towards the beginning and towards the end, I might add in a few more uh, warp points. So let's have a look and see that, because I want those areas to be tighter um, when I'm mixing other tracks in. But that, pretty much looks like it's spot on. And I'll do a quick check with the metronome and let's have a quick listen to the sections. Pretty cool. Uh, I generally don't do much more than that because now what I want to do is I want to look at my sections and command E. I'm just going to break this up into the various sections of the track. And let's take the outro as well. I'm going to highlight all of them, click on the last, click on the first with shift held down, click and a tab, and I'm gonna drag that into my live set here. And what's gonna happen, basically, when this clip reaches the end point, let's just fast forward that bit. As long as my follow device is set to next and clip end, it's gonna trigger the next clip seamlessly. Now, as you can see from those clips, and let's turn off the annoying metronome, my wife hates that. All of these clips are copies of the original clip with all of the sections. So you can go in and change it up and re-edit if you like. Personally, I like things much cleaner, so I will right click and crop all the clips. 
So that was realistically the original intention for Follow Clip XL, to perform those automatic follow actions moving down the set. We wanted to give all of the other options that follow actions have. Um, we got requests for people using them in art installations to add some randomization into there. But generally speaking, Follow Clip XL, I set and forget when I'm using it in this manner. Slightly more complicated and pretty cool way of using it though. As you see from my IO, I've got my audio from track one is actually routed to track two and the monitor is set to in. So anything I play in this track is actually being outputted from track two. And on track two, I've got another copy of Follow Clip XL and I've got my isotonic DJ rack. Now, this is a dummy clip track, basically. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to create some dummy clips in there that are gonna automate this effect rack. And I'm gonna use Follow Clip XL to basically reset those effects. If I go into my clean clip, this is the first one that I'd always create. I'll go and I'll select the isotonic DJ rack. And then I'm gonna select each of the parameters in turn and where there's no automation and basically whatever you change it to, it will continue. I'm gonna double click and create a dot somewhere on that line. It's not really important where because it creates that automation line. And I've done that for all of the parameters, taking them back to their original values, which effectively will turn this, let's just move that up to there, back to the original point. So I can change any of these at will with the mouse and by launching that clip, we'll reset things. Now, on this clean clip, I've actually changed the quantization to none because when it does trigger, I want it to be immediate. On my second clip, the high pass clip, I've got the quantization, quantization at a beat because when I launch it, I want it to be perfectly quantized as an effect with the audio that's playing. I can get so many effects and preset them to be working perfectly every time because I can draw the automation in. And what I've done here is I've gone to the high pass filter and I've worked over, what's this, four bars from fully open to fully closed effectively. And because I've set the launch mode to gate, this clip is gonna play for as long as I hold the button down. So if I press play and then release, it's gonna stop. Now, ordinarily, it would just stop and it would leave. Yeah, it leaves your effect at the point where you set it. So let's just do that again. And it's coming down and stop. And it's stuck halfway. So let's turn Follow Clip XL on, and I want to play the first clip in this block. It's the easiest way to do it. If I want like different blocks of effects, I just leave a gap in between them. And at clip stop, I want it to play the first. So let's just watch that. It's quite exciting. Playing, 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 high pass filtered, falling down, let go, reset. So effectively, with my original clip, and now the high pass, over those four bars, perfectly timed, perfectly in sync, release, and kicks back in on the beat. If I look at the reverb pump clip, that one is over a longer period, so that's over a higher length. And it resets it back. Now, all you need to do to create those dummy clips is to select, uh, let's go tricky, select one of the clips, and draw in some automation. Obviously, I've left this one at the trigger and loop, so it's just gonna keep playing through it. So if I want that to carry on, I would leave it so I could stop it manually. But if I turn off the loop, and turn it back to the gate. I prefer the dummy clips to be more reactive, if you like. So that you kind of play them. And that's the basic premise of Follow Clip XL.
You can use it for follow actions to split your clips so that you have hot cues effectively for DJing with. And you can use it to trigger dummy clips that reset themselves so you can start to play with your effects as well. Follow Clip XL, available now, Isotonic Studios. Thanks for watching. Cheers.